Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book, Star Trek Generations, the novelization by J.M. Dillard. I have been enjoying the Star Trek novelizations as I've read through them. I have read all of the original six except for The Voyage Home, and that's because I can't find it anywhere in my local bookstores, and I just haven't gotten to buying it online yet. But that's my favorite of the movies, so I need to get read it eventually. But I have read the originals. I've read the motion picture novelization, which was, eh, didn't really add much. I read the Wrath of Khan novelization, which, eh, didn't really add much. Then I read The Search for Spock. Amazing! This is a terrific novelization. Oh my goodness, this is amazing, and, and how much it adds and recontextualizes the story for me. Then I also have the other J.M. Dillard books, including um, The Final Frontier, uh, which is not a great movie, but the novelization was actually pretty good. And then we have a terrific movie and also a terrific novelization for The Undiscovered Country, one of my favorite Trek movies. The, um, uh, the book is also just, just superb. Um, uh, it adds so much story. And so I was very hopeful going into Star Trek Generations, the novelization, that I love it because I didn't love the movie Generations. I think it's a well-entertaining movie. It's actually one of the first Star Trek movies I saw on TV when my dad was flipping through channels. He found Generations, and I was uh, I, I happened to be in the room, and I saw him just settle on Generations, and I was like, ooh, I'll watch that with you. Um, in fact, in fact, some of my earliest Star Trek, specifically Star Trek Next Gen uh, characters' uh, memories are of the Next Gen cast on that boat um, uh, in the ocean when they first come on screen. And I was really confused. I was like, I thought this is Star Trek. Why are they on a boat? And then I see them go through uh, the holodeck uh, and go back to the bridge. And I was like, oh, I didn't expect the Tory to go there. Anyway, I was young. But... Uh, I was really hopeful that this book would recontextualize some things. And in some ways, it does an amazing job of doing that. And in some ways, it, it's okay. But overall, it is a terrific book. Um, first of all, talking about the, the elephant in the room, this is the book and the movie that bridges uh, the, the original series cast and the Next Generation cast, particularly through the character of James T. Kirk. Uh, and... I'm going to have to get into major spoilers for the movie because it's just, I mean, it's, if you're a Star Trek fan and, you, and you're watching this, you've probably seen the movie. So I'm, I'm going to spoil it. Every, the, the, the controversy around this book is that Kirk dies and he dies in a quite unceremonious way. And uh, I didn't love that in the movie. I actually, I enjoyed the way the, the kind of his, his being taken by the Nexus at the beginning of the movie, I thought was great. I thought that his, um, uh, the end of the movie stuff where he gets brought out of the Nexus and fights Soren and then dies there, I thought that was pretty weak. Um, uh, and so I, I, I was looking for more recontextualization. And this book does that, especially for the opening section. Um, the movie itself, it's only about like a 15 or 20 minute segment that is in with the original series characters. And then the next two hours of the movie are with the, the next gen characters. So the lion's share of the movie is a next gen movie. It just happens to have original series characters at the beginning and then Kirk at the end. However, this book goes a very different direction and decides to spend roughly the first quarter to first third, almost the first third of the book takes place with the original cast. And it's only the second, the, the, the second two thirds of the book that features the next gen cast. And the second two thirds of the book is pretty much a straight adaptation of the movie. There are little tidbits, little scenes, little extra lines, little extra stuff added here and there, but the second half of the book really is the movie, and it, it reads really fast like the movie does. But the first 70 pages of the book, the first third of the book, really reads differently. It reads like, you, like you're reading a, no, like a prequel novel almost that happens to kind of overlap with the first 20 minutes of the movie because you get stuff between, in the first chapter, about Kirk and um, uh, Carol, uh, not Carol Danvers, uh, uh, why can't I think of her name? But uh, his, you know, the, the mother of his child from, uh, from the previous Star Trek movies. And you see them have some discussions about their future. And you start feeling a little bittersweet that they never really get to have that future. You also have some sequences of Kirk hanging out with um, uh, 
uh, Scotty and with Chekhov, and then basically trying to convince him to 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 join the um, uh, the expedition or to to join the ceremony for the Enterprise B. And Kirk's like, I have no interest in that. And they basically have to kind of convince him. And apparently that was in the movie, and they just kind of cut it out. But I was very, I was, I was very interested in that sequence. And then you get some sequences. Uh, you also get some sequences of him and um, uh, Spock and McCoy, like a one final scene between them that's just really kind of bittersweet. And then you have the whole sequence of the Enterprise B going on its maiden voyage when the crew doesn't arrive until Tuesday, which is one of the best recurring jokes in Star Trek. And uh, you see uh, all that sequence unfold. And then you see after, you know, the movie, it cuts right then and goes to the next gen. But here you get about two chapters worth, or maybe it's one chapter that's really long, but you get two sequences where you get to see Sulu called by Chekhov, who delivers the news that Kirk is dead. And it's such a weighty scene. That one scene, along with the next one I'm going to talk about, sold the book for me. Just absolutely sold the book. And you see Sulu's fear, because he's worried it's his daughter that's been taken. And no, it's not his daughter. It's his best friend, um, uh, or one of his best friends, Kirk. And you see the pain that, that he feels in that sequence. And then you have the memorial sequence uh, where you see McCoy talking with Spock. And, you know, McCoy and Spock in the show and even the movies are constantly bickering. And, you know, McCoy's, you know, kind of set in his ways and Spock's set in his ways and they're very different personalities. And then you have Kirk who kind of ends up being the mediator between them. Well, now Kirk's gone and there's no argument. There's no fighting between Spock and McCoy because they're just so sad and they're just feeling the weight of it. And you also see from Spock's perspective that this is the first close friend that he's lost, Um, probably, arguably, Spock's closest friend. Um, And you feel really for him that he realizes, I'm going to just keep, all my human friends are just going to keep dying, keep dying, keep dying because... I'm going to outlive them by so long unless I get killed myself. And you feel that pain that Spock has. That opening sequence, that opening 70 pages of the book is just terrific. And I'm not even the biggest TOS fan. Um, And when it comes to the TV shows for Star Trek, TOS is towards the bottom for me. But I love the TOS movie era um, so much. And this just really gets those characters and gives us a proper great final hurrah, especially saying goodbye to Kirk. And it just, it was beautiful to read. And I wish if the movie had had those sequences, I think the movie would have been so much more well received. Um, I actually, if I I actually think it would have been interesting for the movie to, uh, to, to keep the flash forward that they have. But at the end of the movie, when Kirk actually dies, you flash back to the memorial sequence that uh, McCoy and Spock have. I think that would have been, it may have been difficult for casual audiences to get it, but I think that would have really sold it to the hardcore Trekkies. And then you have the main plot of the book. And the main plot of Generations is kind of boring, actually. It's not an exciting Star Trek plot, but there's lots of Easter eggs and connections. I hadn't realized how closely this book ties to the Borg. And the Borg show up in the next um, movie in in, in First Contact, which is arguably the best. Well, not arguably. It's pretty much easily said. It's the best of the next-gen movies, um, which I'll be reading that novelization very soon. (laughs) But... uh, uh, the this this plot line itself is fairly boring, but you get some interesting insight into Picard, into Riker, and his relationship and dynamic with Troy and um, uh, Worf at the time, and you see a few other things that I think are really good. So overall, I really enjoyed this book, particularly the opening. I should say, by the way, in this edition of the book, there is like a um, uh, like a forty two page. Um, section that is the behind the scenes that explains how the movie was made. And it talks about the different stages of the movie from the producer standpoint, from the writer's standpoint, from the director's standpoint, from the art director's standpoint, from the people finding the sets and finding the locations and the budgets and stuff. To me, super fascinating because I'm really fascinated in the movie business. And you really see that well here. But 
um, uh, it's not going to be for everyone, and so you don't you don't have to read that to enjoy the novelization itself. But the behind the scenes, I just thought was really fascinating and really well done. Almost almost worth the price of the book itself. It's funny. The behind the scenes was interesting, and the opening sequence was like top notch Star Trek, and then the middle was just paint by numbers novelization. But it was still really good, despite being a paint by numbers one. So I really love this. I'll give it like a nine point three, like a solid novelization. Really entertaining. Uh, can't wait to read more. I s- totally see why J.M. Dillard uh, just, they basically said, just do all the novelizations for, for the next gen crew. So if you've read this book, please let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. How did you think of Kirk's death? And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.